This is Professor Michael Chapman. I'm one of the most experienced IVF doctors in Australia. I believe that an important part that I can contribute is to educate patients in relation to fertility, infertility and all that that involves. These series of podcasts help to educate you. I hope they are helpful to you. If you wish to know more, however, I'm more than happy to have you contact me via email, which is profmchapman at gmail.com or make an appointment to see me on 9138-4222. Hi there, this is Professor Chapman. Tonight, I'm going to talk a bit more about various aspects of the IVF journey. One of the things that's uh, happened in the last decade is the remarkable advances that have occurred in being able to test the genetic makeup of individuals. Just to show you how much we've how far we've come in the in the in the early 1980s it took something like a hundred scientists something like 10 years and some billions of dollars to map the human genome in other words the hundreds of thousands of little bits that go to make up our chromosome today we can do it in an hour for about four or five hundred dollars it's remarkable but with that advance comes a whole pile of issues. As we learn more about our genetic makeup, we are potentially able to avoid disabilities and perhaps even modify our lifestyle if our genetic makeup pointed towards us having diseases in our old age that could be improved by avoiding certain things like sugar and diabetes. Anyway, about a decade ago, uh, it was first applied to human embryos, at least in a more sophisticated way. There was some primitive work done 15 to 20 years ago, but around a decade ago, the advances in technology uh, that were occurring enabled us to look at the chromosomes of the human embryo. The diseases or problems that it can pick up are the easy things, <laughs> uh, the aberrations of the... 23 chromosomes, 23 pairs of chromosomes, the 46 chromosomes that we all should have. So a prime example of one of those aberrations is when the embryo is carrying an extra chromosome 21. Now chromosome 21, extra one causes Down syndrome. So by testing the embryo at five days, we can actually exclude the possibility of Down syndrome in that embryo. Or if we do find it, obviously we won't put it back. But that's just one of the 23 chromosomes. We may find extra chromosomes on, in any of the, the 1 to 23. We may find extra sex chromosomes, double XY instead of XY for a male, which will lead to sperm failure. We can also detect where there's a chromosome missing. So instead of having the trisomy, that's the Down syndrome type situation. We can have monosomy, where there's only one chromosome. So there's, a, there's a whole pile of genetic material that's absent. Those monosomies rarely get past 10 weeks of pregnancy. We almost never see them beyond that uh, point in time. Nature gets rid of them. There is one exception to that, and that's called Turner syndrome, where girls are born with only one X chromosome instead of two. Those children will grow up normally. Generally, they're intellectually fine, but that lack of an X chromosome impacts on the ovaries. So these girls will probably never have a period and obviously never get pregnant with their own eggs. There are also some other abnormalities associated with Turner syndrome, like heart, heart problems. So again, most parents, if they were told that the embryo was XO, would choose not to have it put back. It's obviously certainly easier than finding that out at 10 weeks of pregnancy but with the non-invasive pregnancy testing that, uh, that we're now able to do when you need then to have a termination if you found an abnormality. So there are advantages in having that sort of basic genetic testing done. And uh, so its popularity has varied or does vary even today, from different parts of the world. 
in Europe, it is actually quite uncommon to do genetic testing unless there's an extremely good reason, like parental chromosome abnormalities. In Australia, we run at about 15% of our cycles, we do genetic testing on embryos. In the States, there are clinics that virtually test every embryo that they're going to put back on the basis that improving the success rate. And don't forget that you can access all the previous episodes by going to our website www.theivfjourney.com and select IVF Journey Podcast from the navigation menu.